So, Emily, what's on your radar? Well, the 2024 Republican presidential primary is off to an annoying start. South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem took a barely veiled shot at Florida Governor Ron DeSantis over the weekend, addressing the crowd at CPAC. We talk about rewriting history. Let's talk about rewriting history. We've got Republican governors across this country pretending they didn't shut down their states, that they didn't close their beaches, that they didn't mandate masks, that they didn't issue issue shelter in places. Now, I'm not picking fights with Republican governors. All I'm saying is that we need leaders with grit, that their first instinct is to make the right decision, that they don't backtrack and then try to fool you into the fact that they never made the wrong decision. Oh, she's not a trying to she's not trying to attack Republican governors. That line of attack is actually not going to work for Nome. There are two clear reasons why. First, she did exactly what she's accusing DeSantis of doing. Second, she's lost the political capital to level bad faith attacks against DeSantis. So let's start with the first point. Nome's political star throttled her to the front of the pack last summer when she took enormous heat for opening her state up amid the pandemic. We now know prolonged extensive lockdown mandates disproportionately hurt the middle class and had little to no effect on key health outcomes. An Associated Press report from March crunched the numbers. Quote, California and Florida both have a COVID-19 case rate around 8,900 per 100,000 residents since the pandemic began, according to the Federal Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And both rank in the middle among states for COVID-19 death rates. Florida was 27th as of Friday. California was 28th. That's from the AP, not from a right-wing news website. Connecticut and South Dakota are another example, the AP added. Both rank among the 10 worst states for COVID-19 death rates, yet Connecticut Governor Ned Lamont, a Democrat, imposed numerous statewide restrictions over the past year after an early surge in deaths, while South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem, a Republican, issued no mandates as virus deaths soared in the fall. Noam took immense heat in the national media and during a long cycle of wild accusations about her competence and her character that ultimately proved wrong. She was vindicated. Now, Noam is clearly irked that DeSantis is getting more credit despite his early actions to contain the virus. She's right that he's getting more credit, but we'll discuss why that is in just a moment. First, however, let's correct the record on lockdowns. John Schweppe of the Populist Conservative American Principles Project exposed Noam's flip-flop on girls' sports and transgender athletes on his Substack earlier this year. Quote, at the time, Schweppe said, I had heard from several sources, including from legislators, that Noam's reputation on COVID-19 was greatly exaggerated in conservative media, that she only appeared to oppose lockdowns and mandates because the Republican-led legislature forced her hand. Schweppe wrote that on Monday, adding, I didn't feel like it was necessary to attack her on it then, but I did some digging, and yes, it turns out Noam did support lockdown measures early on. Schwebe points out a bill introduced at Nome's request was actually rejected by the state's House of Representatives back in March of 2020 for executive overreach. She then issued two executive orders that required adherence to CDC restrictions on behalf of businesses and individuals. Now, I do not envy Nome for having to make those decisions back in March of 2020. With limited information on the virus, there was little clarity. It's extremely easy to Monday morning quarterback those decisions, and politicians are, of course, already exploiting that to score points. But that's exactly why Noam's attack is silly. DeSantis could, and actually may, turn right around and use it against her. They both ultimately freed their constituents of onerous restrictions as better information became available. This fight won't be a constructive one, but it's one Christy Noam needs to wage. And that brings me to the second reason this line of attack will not land. Noam is grasping at straws to take early shots at DeSantis, seeking to establish herself as the only real anti-lockdown governor, because that's increasingly all she has. All I'm saying is that we need leaders with grit, that their first instinct is to make the right decision, that they don't backtrack and then try to fool you into the fact that they never made the wrong decision. I could not possibly have written a better description of the governor's flip-flop on women's sports myself. That is exactly what she did. Noam's, quote, first instinct was to sign the bill. Remember, she tweeted about it. She then, quote, backtracked to placate business interests and with a style and form veto, then tried to, quote, fool you into thinking she never backtracked. 
So as Schweppe pointed out back in March, Nome used the style and form veto to request substantial changes to the legislation that weakened it, pretty clearly in response to pushback from the NCAA and Amazon, which would have allowed unelected executives at massive multinational corporations to dictate social policy in a red state against voters' wishes. What's worse is that Nome blamed those of us in conservative media for spreading disinformation. Beyond the media, Schweppe, American Principles Project, and other conservative groups like Alliance Defending Freedom were raising objections. And conservative media outlets were so shocked by Nome's tone-deaf decision, we spent days trying to get in touch with her office to figure it all out. They were not exactly responsive. Nome reiterated this deeply dishonest excuse once again at CPAC over the, over the weekend. Quote, the women's sports issue was the one that was the hardest for me because I've been attacked by liberals my whole life. But getting attacked by my friends was tough, she said. So us on the right that say, oh, we're never wrong. No, we've got conservative reporters, conservative networks that definitely do not tell the truth either. That is an insane statement, outright accusing the people who told the truth about her decision of lying when her own office was spinning and obfuscating. Conservative media had no access to grind whatsoever. In fact, if you look back on conservative coverage of Nome during the lockdowns, if anything, it showed the incentive was to boost her. There was a genuine effort to understand why she vetoed that bill in March. She did not provide genuine answers. We did our job just fine, both when we went against the entire political establishment to offer fair coverage of her and opening up her state, and when we questioned her excuse for sending back a bill, she said she would sign. Listen, as a rule, politicians are conniving and self-interested liars who use public office to enrich themselves. Our expectations of their character should be low. Christy Nome is lying to the public and throwing the people who actually dare to question the establishment narrative under the bus as liars, even when it benefited her, all for the sake of salvaging her political career. She's trying to sow distrust in the outlets that told the truth about her successes and mistakes, outlets upon which people depend for the information legacy media distorts and ignores to boost her political career. Even for politicians, it's a pretty despicable effort. And it's so blatant that I'm not sure Noam realizes how poorly it'll end for her if she insists on relitigating these decisions in the public square. Do not buy what she's selling. Ryan, this is obviously, first of all, I want to say I have <clears throat> no dog in the DeSantis versus Noam fight. I could not care less about either of their political careers. They can do their own thing. Doesn't matter at all to me. Um, it's beyond sour grapes just from the conservative media perspective. I also, we're constantly attacked by everyone. It doesn't matter, politicians, whatever. Get that on the table. You can use this as a scapegoat if you want. But for the people of South Dakota um, for whom these things, you know, talking about these issues is really difficult. Talking about, for instance, girls' sports and transgender athlete, athletes, that stuff's really difficult. So for Christy Nome to then back down on the issue and blame the people who were sticking their necks out. I think it's, you know, everything else aside, it's just clearly an example of poor character and it's infuriating, but I think it probably has more to do with seeing DeSantis swerve into that 2024 lockdown lane. And so, she, and so her argument is that DeSantis actually wasn't anti-lockdown right. in the beginning and that she's the real Yes. Anti, anti lockdown person. Did you hear her say it closed their beaches in yeah. the CPAC speech? I, yes. Yeah. I mean, she doesn't have any beaches, right? I mean, maybe there's some yeah. lakes that have like sort of pseudo beaches that, that yeah. she kept open. I don't think she's talking about like uh, Gavin Newsom or like Charlie Baker. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> Republican governors. And actually, we could compare it to a Republican governor, the, the one in the, in the state where I lived during the pandemic, Vermont. It's, it's just mind blowing to me that she's going to try to run on her. COVID record in, in South Dakota, they had one of the worst death rates in the entire world. I think one out of every fewer than 500 people who was alive before COVID is now dead in South Dakota. One out of 500 people died. And that that could be not just not disqualifying for a, a Republican candidate in the primary, but a calling card but something that she would lead with is wild. Vermont has roughly the same number of people as South Dakota and also has a Republican governor. I think I just looked it up, uh, how many people died? Like 
258, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, so one, one tenth of the people died in Vermont than died in South Dakota. And, and, and you can't say, well, they're completely different states. You know, they're both, they're both rural states with rural people. Uh, so how is it that, it, like, explain this to me. Mm -hmm. Like, how, how is it that with that record, she would not only be qualified to run, but would run on that record. I think what's interesting is that in the AP numbers that I put in the radar are pretty, I think they're pretty powerful to say that, listen, you could close everything down and you could still be California and you can close everything down or you could be South Dakota where you had um, a lot of deaths, but you also didn't entirely cripple working people in the middle class. And I think that's where people are latching on to the Christy Gnomes and the Ron DeSantis's because it is, I mean, if you compare Gnome and DeSantis with what happened in California and with Gavin Newsom, I do think it's to their benefit. Um, but yeah, that's, that's why this is, they're competing for this lane. And it's interesting to your point that, you know, they're gonna run on this because to me, that's exactly what they're going to run on. I mean, all the early signs indicate that if they run in 2024, and by the way, Donald Trump could enter this primary and end it immediately, mm -hmm. um, any day. Right. Like everything, like what is just going to be him and some sort of never Trump person. Right. Then so, they're just running for vice president at right. that point. Yeah. And I only killed one out of 500 people, so it should be, <laughs> it should be, it should be me. <laughs> we'll see how that plays out, though. I mean, that's going to play out to a very interesting effect in 2024. It's become, like you said, a calling card um, on the right. And then to watch that be litigated, I think, by a crop of Republicans, assuming Donald Trump doesn't get in and end it immediately, yeah. it'll be interesting. But I'm looking forward to what's on your radar next.